Good morning. I guess it's 125. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? I hope you guys are well. I, uh, <clears throat> you may have seen the description here. Um, I have a giant drum set that me and Kevin just finished building. And I need to put it on a rack. What I'm going to do is set up this rack today, get the drums put on it, and then send some pictures to the client. We're rocking two cameras today. Hello over there, other camera. I'm just testing out this DSLR situation to see if that's something that might work. Um, I had a really cool uh, conversation with a bunch of streamers yesterday at the uh, Delaware Drum Show. Dan Stone and uh, Don Palombi was... I met him for the first time. He's really fucking cool. And we talked a lot about streaming and blah, blah, blah. And, just, and I'm continually trying to do this thing where if I'm doing something boring, or it's not something boring, but if I'm doing something that's going to be stationary and not super loud, why not just jump in and uh, stream it? You know what I mean? So that's what we're doing here today. If anybody's watching, uh, jump in and give me a, a, a AV check. Audio working, video working, let me know. So I have two of these pearl racks that I need to set up. Well, I'm, I don't think I'm going to set up both of them today because what the client ordered was Red Baron Drums. What's up, brother man? How are you doing? Cool. It's good to, good to see you, brother. How are you doing? Everybody, my good friend Colin is on here. He's one of the coolest people I know, one of the better drummers that I've ever met. And uh, Colin, Colin is a. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have him on the roster of HHG artists. He plays one of our beautiful snare drums. Uh, I think Colin has a really great 14 by 8 cedar snare drum that he picked up in person a couple years ago, which is a bit of a rare thing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm opening all of these boxes. Johnny Hoagland, what's up, man? How are you doing? Good to. Did I say your name right? Johnny Hoagland. Good to see you, man. How are you doing today? I hope your day's going well. Colin, how's your day going, man? Is it going well? I hope the answer to that is yes. It's going great. It is a beauty, beautiful, sunny day here in Pennsylvania. It's been a rare thing as of late. I apologize. I'm rocking this on, like, a little tiny cell phone screen. Oh, maybe this will be better. Is that better? No, that's not, that's not better. What are you going to do? Would you guys bear with me for just a moment? I'm going to see if I can get this thing. If I flip this to landscape, is it going to go? Oh, my God, that's so much better. Yes, okay. We're going to do that. Yes, that's what we're doing. Much, much more gooder. Just working till I get to play some drums. I know the feeling, Colin, not fun. But you got to do what you got to do, right? So maybe this angle will work. Yeah, this will work. This is now I turn the phone landscape, so now I can kind of read the comments with you guys and uh, also let you be able to see me. But yeah, so Colin, let me tell you about the Delaware Drum Show, my guy. And anybody that's watching. It was a super fun time. I had so much fun. I have some thoughts about that place and that show. I've, I've been revisiting, like, what... You know, I've been touching base with myself this morning. Like, Sam, what did you think of that show? And the quick answer is it was awesome, right? I apologize. I don't have my glasses on, so it's kind of hard to read the screen from far away. But um, the show was awesome. I had so much fun. And it was, it was, it was cool. There was, like, there was less people there this year than there was in 2020. I mean, understandably so, because, you know, they skipped a year. And if you skip a year of anything... You know, people stopped caring a little bit. But then also, I think the main thing that was kind of holding them down was the uh, the uh, the plague that everybody's living through at the moment. I think that was probably part of the problem. But so less people. Um, but overall, pretty good. Like, we sold a bunch of snare drums, which I was super excited about. Uh, we built, like, I think we had, like, 13 snare drums that we brought down to the show. And we left with significantly less. I think we sold five snare drums. Which, like, when you go to these shows, they're never, you know, after going to the first one, I realized that there's a real, they're not really, like, you're not going to sell a lot of stuff, right? Like, they're not really for that. Really what these shows are for. Hey, Kevin, what's up, brother man? 
Kevin, I'm working on getting you some stuff to do over here uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, I want to have – I have a bunch of drums. Obviously, we have a bunch of drums that need shipped. And I plan on having oh, – look at that. Pearl included a free drum key. I hope the client's not watching this because I am keeping this. I love these drum keys. Um, <laughs> I'm the worst. Ain't I a stinker? Anyways, um, what is this shit? Pearl hardware. Do we need this tag? Oh, this is if you're selling it in the store. But yeah, Kevin, I'm working. On, I'm gonna get you, uh, get you caught up to speed here on your to-do list as soon as humanly possible. We got a couple of drums that need shipped, but I want to, you know, I don't want to waste your time. I want to get them. I want to get it so you can ship all of them at the same time. So it looks like we got the oak, the the creation refinish job, the you know the GTR. And then there's one more. Oh, uh, Pete's purple, white, marine pearl drum. I just got to get photos of, I think, all I got to get photos of is the GTR and the creation. I don't even know if I'm going to photo the creation, but once I get photos of those, you'll be good to go. You can get over here and pack a bunch of stuff and ship it out. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. It's been a long time. So this goes here. I don't know if you guys have ever, uh, Awesome man, not a problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you squared away here shortly, Kevin. I don't. I don't know if it'll be today, cause like I, I don't want to like you know make you have extraneous trips. So I don't know. It all depends on whether I get this photographed or not. But this, my number one focus is this at the moment, cause I want to get these things. I'm I'm leaving Thursday, and today is Monday, so I need to have this thing finished and ready to rock as soon as possible. But yeah, Colin, I was talking about the show, man. So, great show. Not as many people, but, to, you know, to be expected, not a problem. And uh, we sold, sold some drums, but the, the important thing with those shows is you're not really there to sell drums. Like, you're really there just to, to kind of meet and greet, you know? Like, you're there because you're a small drum company that nobody's ever heard of before. And it gives people a chance to, like, show up. There's one. We got oh, I got the far camera. Hello, far away camera. I've got one leg assembly put together. Let's do let's do three of these. What do you say? Um, I also have these PCX pipes. Yeah, so is you know you go to those things and they're, you're going to them because you want to meet people and you want people to be able to put some sticks onto your drums and you know know that you exist. Frankly, because it's a lot of people are, you know, they're walking around, they've never heard of you, you know what I mean? So that's that's kind of the main purpose of those things, and that worked out pretty well. But I, I was thinking about this this morning, and Kevin, chime in if you have some thoughts about this also. I don't 100% know that I ever want to go back to the Delaware Drum Show. It's nothing against Joey and anybody at the show, because they're, they're doing an ostensibly fantastic job of putting that show together. But what I realized was, like, you go to that show and it's it's a small show and there's there's not a lot of vendors and there's that saying that like what the fuck how is this going? Oh, there's two set screws. Pearl. God damn it. But it's a, you know that saying like if you're not doing anything important unless you're out of your comfort zone. And that, that like that I think that holds true to a point. Uh, for a lot of things. And, I mean, just going to the show, of course, I'm out of my comfort zone. Like, I'm very much an introvert. I don't want to go hang out with people. I don't want to build a bunch of extra snare drums and do this thing, but I, I understand that it's necessary, so we do it. But being out of your comfort zone in the context of that show, the, the more I think about it, to me, what I think that means is, like, we went there, and people were real impressed, and they were like, oh, this is awesome, and you know, I think we were kind of, there was like, I think Reverie Drums was there. They make some really high-end stuff. Um, JJ Rums, I've never heard of them before. They're, you know, custom high-end stuff. Who else was there? I mean, there's a lot of, there was like Mongiello Symbols was there. Uh, I'm trying to think of like what other custom, oh, Bucks County, of course, Chris Carr. Like, absolutely fantastic drums. Super impressed by Reverie. Super, I'm always blown away by everything Chris does. And... But after being there for a while, I was like, I want to go to a, 
show where like people are walking past their booth. And I think we were like, you know, we're that company that had like the most expensive, most custom stuff. I mean, you know, not, not denigrating anybody else that was there. Cause like Chris's stuff is, is fucking fantastic. Reveries is fan- like Ludwig was there, but like they had like one kid and like a bunch of snare drums. But I guess I, my, my thought about it is like people are walking around. Like I heard <laughs> a great case in point. It's like, I saw a guy walk past and he was like, he didn't even come into the booth, and he was just like, he's like, that's the expensive shit. <laughs> and then he just kept walking. And I would like to go to a show where there's companies that are much bigger than me, that are much more popular than me, that make, you know, far and away hugely better, like, like DW and like, you know, Pearl and Tama. So my point being here, what I'm what I'm rambling and trying to say is, I'm starting to think that going to that show is it's a lot of effort and maybe not a lot of return because it's just it's small and I and I just don't 100% know that going to all that effort for that small of a return, you know, that small amount of exposure, like you're not you're just getting like regional dudes, you know, you're getting like tri-state area guys. And we met some really cool people, like. Liberty DeVito was there, and uh, we have to go to Music Sunday Fest or Chicago. Yes, Kevin, that's what I'm thinking. Red Baron, my dude. Kevin, I got you a bunch of 18 inch boxes. Oh, Red, uh, Colin, thank you. The GTR is pretty dope, right? It's that like color shift paint. Sorry, I was like not paying attention to the comments. Um, yeah, Greg, what's up, man? Hey, Greg, how you been, man? It's good to see you. I've not talked to you for a while. Johnny Hoagland and Kevin saying Nam and Pasic. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that if I'm going to go to all this effort, me and Kevin are going to go to all this effort to like go to these fucking shows. I want the return to be worth it. Like I want to go to the show and I want to leave feeling like, oh, okay, we were seen. We were seen on a big scale. And when I go to the Delaware drum show, we were seen, but we were seen by like a bunch of, you know, regional drummers from the tri-state area. Not talking shit on any of those guys. Those guys are all awesome. There's a bunch of fantastic players there. Totally blown away. But like, if I'm going to go to all that effort, like, I want the most bang for my buck. So yeah, to, to Kevin and, uh, Mr. Hoagland's point, Pasic and Nam. I think, I think Pasic and Nam, like, I would much rather completely skip the Delaware drum show. I don't even know that the Music City drum show in Nashville is something I'm interested in at this point. Because I've I've heard mixed reviews about that as well. Um, let's see how do we get this nice and square? Okay, dig it. Yeah, I'm not even 100 percent sure that like Pasic is something I'm super interested in. Uh, or I'm sorry, the the Music City Drum Show. I'm not even sure that's something I'm super interested in. Because like. Okay. Sorry, I'm, having, I'm just having some thoughts. Just thinking some thoughts. Okay. Anyways. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking about how I'm gonna connect because this this rack's gonna have like a second tier, and the the old school uh when I I used to have one of these pearl icon racks and they had like a they had a tab at the bottom or like a three quarter inch diameter thing that would fit into this so you could stack a second one. These new ones, they're not like that. They have, they're just, the tubes are just round at the end. So I'm glad I'm doing this because I'm going to have to order, I'm going to have to order an additional part, which is no big deal. All right. Let's set this thing up. What do you say? I think this is going to need to go higher. Oh, connect that. I don't know if you guys have ever set up one of these pearl racks, but they are, Fantastic. I love the design of these things, the square tubes. <coughs> Comments. Day one after the Delaware War Drum Show. I'm back already. Awesome. Yes, John. We're back. We're safe. Is this cast? Is this Bell Brass? <laughs> oh, God. So, I'm going to tell a dirty joke, and you guys might not like it. This might not be PC, but I'm going to do it anyways. We came with, uh, I was talking, and he was, we were like, what was the joke? It was like, I like my women. Oh yeah, 
It's like I wait. I like my women like I like my snare drums, dry and fat. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible, but it's funny as shit. But yeah, I don't know. So yeah, Delaware Drum Show, ten out of ten. Had a great time. Sold some drums. Met a bunch of cool people. Like I enjoyed everything about it. But I am starting to have second thoughts about whether I want to return or not, or whether I would rather focus some effort on something that would put me squarely outside of my comfort zone, which in my mind would be something like NAM. Um, but that's the thing is, it's like I don't even know if NAM is going to be something that's going to be possible for me, Kevin, in the foreseeable future. Just because NAM is a goddamn, it's an undertaking, right? So like Delaware Drum Show, Delaware Drum Show, food costs 150 bucks. Nam, food cost, I don't know, $3,000 or some shit. Like, it's super fucking expensive. Can you guys see the kit set up? I'm going to adjust. Legacy, what's up, man? How are you guys doing? Thanks for popping in. You having a good day, Legacy? I hope you are. You guys make fantastic shit. Let me adjust this a little bit so we can see what we're doing with this kit. Alright, let's start before we get Ah! I used to rock one of these uh, pearl racks. Like, I think, I think if you start playing drums, everybody goes through that phase. And maybe not. Maybe it was just me, but I went through a phase of like, uh, like heavy metal, right? Like, I like heavy metal. And uh, when I was doing that, when I was in my heavy metal phase, I had one of these pearl racks. And it was fucking fantastic. But then you quickly start gigging a lot, and I think you realize, like, oh, this is really unnecessary. I don't need this shit in my life. So I got rid of it years and years ago. But they're nice as shit. I really, I like everything. They're very simple design, pretty robust. Sean Faddis, what's up, man? Mike Crochetti, good to see you, brother. Yeah, Nam is a major, Kevin, Kevin says, Nam is a major undertaking. We have a new shop to get squared away. Maybe in a few years, that's my thought. I agree with you, Kevin. Like, what I, I my, my thought after that show yesterday was like, I don't really know that the juice is worth the fucking squeeze after, after I got done doing that show. And I, it's, like I said, nothing against Joe, nothing against that show. It's a great show. I just think that if I'm going to put a bunch of time, effort, and money into doing what is essentially, you know, paid advertising, customer discovery like that, I would rather do it in a way that I'm really, really going to pay off. And I think that if I spend, you know, a bunch of money and time going to NAM, that's going to be a lot better for the business than spending a little bit of money and a little bit of time going to Delaware. That's that's kind of my hot take on the whole thing. I could be wrong about this, but I don't, I'm not sure. But yeah, Kevin, to your point, like, I, <laughs> if that's the gameplay, right? Like, if that's, if that's what we're going to do, if we're going to just, like, if we're going to skip Delaware next year, then I think, how do we want to do this? Like that? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, like that. Let's do it like that. If we're going to skip Delaware next year, then I say we skip Delaware. I, I say we don't return to doing drum shows until we have the new shop up and running, because that is the most important numero uno thing for the drum business at the moment is... Getting out of this, you know, this, I'm, for everybody's, for your reference, uh, Kevin knows this, but anybody else watching might not, like, this is, like, Kevin's shop here, this is where Kevin does all the assembly and the shipping and the, the, all that stuff, and then there's, like, I have another shop, which is just, like, a detached garage, about 900 square feet, this is, like, 300 square feet, this is literally, like, a shed that we run, and, uh, this shit, this shit ain't working for us anymore, man. Like, we're, we're busy as hell, we're getting tons of orders, and we just, we really need more space. We need new, we need newer and bigger equipment, and so yeah, Kevin, I think that, like, new shop, priority numero uno, and then next priority is shit like drum shows, you know? Uh, how do I want to do this? Let's put that one on the other side of the this I gotta go. Some errands to run. See you later, Kevin. Thanks for swinging. Thanks, uh, Legacy. Thank you, brother. Hey, Sean Faddis. What's up, man? Yeah, the, the bass drum woofer, Sean, is pretty dope. I'm a big fan. Uh, Legacy says, thanks. I hope you're well. 
Wish you the best man in regards from Germany. Appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Um, so yeah, man. Delaware Drum Show. I'm sorry. I don't mean to ramble, but like I'm alone with my thoughts a lot. I have a lot of thoughts about that show and the drum business and stuff. And this is, you guys are my therapy. I get to hear myself talk. I mean, you guys, yeah, I appreciate all the, I appreciate the discussion with you guys because it's like, it's nice to have people like this to bounce stuff off, right? Wunderbar. Wunderbar. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's uh let's we got four rack toms. That's my first goal here. Is like I just want to get the rack toms on the rack. Um, and then after the rack toms on the on the rack, then I don't know, get those situated. And then I gotta get these concert toms on here somewhere. That might be secondary rack or something. I'm not sure. We'll figure that out. Let's get these on here. So I got a bunch of these things. I'm a big fan of these. Uh, but, but, but I'll just turn it sideways here so you guys see this. It's like these Gibraltar multi-position socket ball arm situations. These are pretty dope. I don't know what what do you guys like for for Tom mounting hardware? Like that's just one of those things in the drum world where it's like. Everybody's got a, usually a strong opinion one way or the other. Legacy says she sh showed his girlfriend the GTR. <laughs> she's a race car. She's a car girl. That's cool. Yeah, man. I like that GTR snare is pretty cool. Like that was, you know, I, I'm lucky in that I get the opportunity from a lot of really awesome clients. They come with, they come to me with these crazy awesome ideas, and then we get to make those things come true. And the GTR snare was one, it was like a great case in point for that. Like, this guy had this wild idea, like, hey, let's do, you know, let's do that beautiful color from those Nissan GTRs. Ooh, this is pretty intense. Look at this. How does this work? Oh, how does this work? Oh my goodness, that's stiff. Okay, I like it. Nice, dig it. I really like the ball and sock. Yeah, me too, man. Sean says, sorry if you already answered or explained this, but are the shells seamed, drawn, or cast? Just curious. Frankly, I like all three methods. So these shells are, seam yeah, they're seamed, but they're not seamed like you see everybody, like you see a lot of people doing this like riveted thing where they like, they take thin metal and then they rivet the, they rivet the seam together and or some other method. There, I've seen a couple of different things, rivets and lap joints and all kinds of crazy things. But in my mind, the best way you can connect two pieces of metal is to weld those two pieces of metal together. So that's how I make all my metal shells. So I roll a piece of flat material into a cylinder, then I weld the seam. And at that point, it's an interesting thing. So like you say, so the the yeah technically the drum has a place where it used to be two flat pieces of metal and then those two flat pieces of metal came together to make uh, a cylinder. But if you look into like welding at all, when you weld something, when you properly weld two pieces of metal together, they stop being one two pieces of metal or you know, two ends of the same piece of metal. And they effectively become one piece of metal. And that's that's how I make the shells. They're rolled and they're welded. But it's like the seam thing. Like whenever you say, oh, is there a seam on your metal, your metal shell? That's that's automatically kind of like a negative connotation. You know what I mean? Um, I don't really look at it that way. I think seam, uh, like a shell that is rolled and welded, though there is technically a place where those two pieces of metal came together, there's not, it's one contiguous piece of metal. If you look at it like uh, in a kind of a molecular standpoint, like those two pieces of metal, once they are put together like that and then they are fused together, the two sides, the two pieces, you know, the two sides of that shell, the metal liquefies 
they melt together, and then they become one contiguous piece of metal. Sean, I know this is a, I know this is a really annoyingly long explanation about this, but <laughs> I have thoughts. Um, so yeah, that's how I make them. Short story long. I roll them and I weld them. But when they're all done, in my mind, they're as good as you know a single piece of metal because molecularly they are. Yeah, I'm gonna be. This is gonna be kind of a last minute thing getting this kit to this guy. Like I was talking about earlier. So this kit's so big. It's a uh, six, eight, ten, twelve. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Wait, six, eight, ten uh, concert toms, and then ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen rack toms. Yeah. Colin, I agree. The ball and socket mounts, they're dope. Um, I don't really like those tube arm mounts, but I, it looks, I like the high end, like the, on like the Pearl Masterworks and shit, the way they have their opt mounts and those like, you know, hollow metal tube. Those are pretty nice. I like those too. But the ball and sockets seem to be, they seem to be pretty much industry standard if it's like the top of the line. That's what I like to get for everything. It just seems to be a really rigid connection. Really works well. Oh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, the size of this kit. This kit's real big, man. It's a. It's going to be a bit of a you know last minute deal to get this all the way down there. Because it's in it's Knoxville, Tennessee. Is where this is going. I'm going to take it to the guy's house and install it for him. And the drum set's all done except for the snare drum. Like I'm, the snare drum is really cool. He decided he wanted to do a, uh, like, the Lord of the Rings like inscription, like the you know the, the the one ring, if you will. We're gonna take and do the inscription from that ring on the snare drum. And the snare drum is done ostensibly. The shells all finished. Every all these, by the way, are powder coated, so they're all powder coated like a. Uh, uh, all powder coated in like a, a gold color. I forget what it's called specifically, but it's a really nice, really heavy duty powder coat. Digging that so far, looking pretty good. Um, but the snare drum, we're doing the Lord of the Rings inscription on it, and I just I'm painting that like as we speak, kind of like I just this morning I. I put on the uh, the last coat of the clear coat. I'm going to give that a day or so to dry. Someday I'd love to see that process, filming permitting. I also agree with you that if you weld properly, it's sonically very pure. Yeah, Sean, that's kind of where I'm at, man. Because uh, I see a lot of people doing like uh, like a riveted scene. Like, I think, who's that one company? Q, uh, Q Drum Co. out in Los Angeles. They, they do like a riveted scene. And I've done that before. Well, let me put it this way. I did that once. I did the riveted scene one time. And I'm not saying the Q doesn't make fantastic drums, because they do. But after I did that one time, I was like, I don't want to do it like this ever again. It's just, if you do it like this again, I just, it's in my mind, as soon as I got done with the kit, I was like, it was a big steel kit with riveted seams. And I was like, it was functional and it worked great and it sounded good. But it's just, there's, that's, to me, it's like overcomplicating what should be an easy process. Like, if you got two pieces of metal and you need to stick the seam, you know, you need to stick the two edges of uh, a piece of metal together into a cylinder, there's no better way to do it than welding. And I'm a nerd and I like tools. So that gave me an excuse to buy a whole bunch of welding equipment, which I got. Sean says, plus the bending of the metal and the welding, it adds tension to the metal. Which adds to the tone. Yeah, and that there's actually really that I didn't really realize how much that was true, Sean, until I started doing it. Because like once you take a you take a flat piece of metal and you tap, it's kind of like that you know that old trope that John John Good from DW does, where he like takes a piece of plywood and like bends it, and then the tension makes the tone of the piece of plywood change. It's very much the same thing with metal. Uh, if you take a big, you know, flat piece of metal before you roll it and, and weld it, it, uh, God damn it, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, 
Yeah, like you take a big flat piece of metal and then you tap it with your fingers. It has a real thunderous low note to it. And then once it's rolled and welded, the tension in the shell, like you said, Sean, comes up a lot. And you can, even before it's welded, if you hold the seams apart so they don't rattle together, you can really hear, like, there's, like, there's a clear note that starts to develop once you've rolled it, which I think is really cool. Because it starts to, uh, that's when you can start to hear it become a drum. Oh, this is hard. Oh, jeez. Let's go to the other side. Okay, all right. Waiting. Waiting. Wait. Very good. Take it. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I'm doing this because I just like within ten minutes of doing this, I realized first and foremost, this is gonna take some time. Part of me was just like, ah, fuck it, I'll just do it when I get there. But the guy was like, understandably, he's like, hey, before I, you know, pay off the rest of the kit, would you mind setting it up so I can kind of see it? Did you do it? Yeah, exactly, Sean. That's what I'm talking about. Like that, you know, the tension that goes into that seam, you, or goes into the shell, you can really hear it. But yeah, <laughs> the client was like, understandably so. He's like, hey, before I finish paying off the kit, would you mind just sending me a picture of it set up because that's you know that's ostensibly what he's paying for is he's not just he bought the drum set but he's also like hired me to purchase everything he needs for this rack and set the rack up for him which is not something i've ever done before but i totally understand you know if you if you want to have this big awesome drum set it's a chore like as anybody that has ever bought a bunch of drum hardware knows it is a chore to set that stuff up, to buy all the components, to get all the components to work together, to make sure everything's gonna, make sure everything's gonna chooch. It's not easy. Okay, so that's, that looks like dog shit. <laughs> that looks like dog shit, but that's, that's a good start. That's, cause my goal is I wanna get all of the rack pawns. I don't know, let's think about this just a little bit. We're gonna have a vertical here. I want to get all the rack tongs on just this center bar. And then there's going to be a left side to this. The left side will be, I think in the concert, maybe we'll have, because there's going to be, there's going to be two, this is going to be two tiers. Like he's going to have a whole second bar system up here. He wants to put all the symbols on the second layer. So I'm going to probably have another wing that comes over here. Perhaps I can have. I'm thinking like the four rack toms. You probably want to just spread those evenly across the center of the bass drum. 10, 12, 15, 14. And then we'll have this second one that comes over here. Maybe we can stick the. Uh... <laughs> this is a little challenging. Maybe I should switch these out to the smaller ones. So that I have more reach. Like, so I'm gonna have this bar here, and these have a long tube to them. Maybe I should have that long tube over here so I can... Yeah, this is fine. Let's do this. Let's do this. So, I'm just gonna probably worry about here. I'm also very picky, I'm sure that you guys are too, about like, where, like, the distance between my toms and my kick drum, I like everything as tight as I can possibly get it. So you really gotta take some time here and get this part right. Because where these get positioned are ultimately gonna kind of dictate where everything gets positioned. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. Just 
There we go. Okay, love it. Maybe bring this out just a little bit. Maybe. Oh, this is different. Jesus. You guys, I'm, I apologize. You're all staring at my butt back there. This is weird. This is awkward. This is awkward. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a 14 inch long. No, man. Where the fuck am I going to put that? Let's just start there. See how that works. Let me scoot you over just a little bit. That's a cool thing that I like about these LR situations too. It's like you can, you can rotate, you can rotate the drum on this, this rod to get your final position. Which is pretty handy. Okay, liking it. I think if I can get these visually even now, maybe this whole thing will move back a little bit. Though. Now let's straighten it. I don't like this. Let's straighten it. Okay, that's pretty good. Now let's straighten it. Like it? Okay, dig it. Possible, we can do that. But that one's higher than the other one, so Yeah, and I'm, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, I'm, I, I want my, I want even my hardware to be like nice as far as the position. I want everything to be even and look good. So, like, I want to get all these so that they're, like, roughly at the same height. Let's start there. Let's, that, that's not so. Okay. Let me take a look at these comments. Jonathan Pyle, what's up, man? Good to hear from you. Hey, John. Uh, Red Baron, is you Lou Ferrigno know, to carry this? <laughs> uh, Colin, I don't think this kid's ever leaving this guy's house, ever. I think this is going to be, like, in his man cave and just not moving. I think that's the deal with this. Uh, Jonathan, Pyle, my guy, your drum is completely done. I don't know, you probably, oh yeah, you can put, oh no, I moved the camera angle. It's all the way over there, sitting on the rack, ready to go. So, I just need to photograph that thing. As soon as I photograph it, you can pay off your remaining balance if there is one, and she will be ready to go. Lovely. We'll rotate you a little bit to the left. Like that, so we can get that 12 in there. Lovely. It's 12 in here. Oh man, this is cool. I love, this is like the most, this is a big, big payoff. There was so much work that went into building this thing. It's so cool to finally see it like come into life. Starting to realize now that these drums are incredibly heavy. And I don't have this rack balance in a way that is going to prevent it from the fuck out of it. So I should probably do that. 18 is nasty. All right, let's get one more leg assembly up on this. Right now, let's do that. Let's do that right now before this becomes an issue. Randy Cervello! What's up, brother man? Thank you for popping in. Randy, I'm trying to walk the walk, man. We we were uh, chatting last night about all this streaming shit and social media and all this stuff. Me and... Randy Cervello, um, everybody, first off, Randy, let me ask you this. How's your day going? Are you as tired as I am? Because I'm pretty I'm pretty beat from yesterday. But Randy, for anybody that doesn't know him, is ostensibly one of the best drummers I've ever met in my life. And I've been able to have him been playing a lot of my drums for many years now. Randy and uh, Kevin, Randy came with me and Kevin yesterday to the show, to the Delaware Drum Show. And... Uh, Oh boy, howdy, it was a long day. <laughs> oh my god. Like we left, we had to leave here at four o'clock in the morning 
to get to the show. And then we didn't get home to like 11.30. So it was like, ugh, it was like an 18-hour day. But Randy, I appreciate you coming with us, man. That worked out great. Randy was a fucking trooper. Helped us move all the stuff. And for anybody watching that is interested in an absolutely mint... Oh, dude, Randy, you're welcome. Thank you, man. I, I genuinely appreciate you coming, brother. It was a good time. But, uh, anybody that might be looking for a mint George Way kit in some kind of beautiful blue finish, I don't know what you call that, Randy. Uh, Randy's My guy Randy's got one for sale, so hit him up if you're interested in a really, really fantastic George Way kit. I think he was selling it for two grand, a three-piece kit. It looked like a 22, 13, 16, something like that. We took it to the drum show in hopes that we could, uh, in hopes that we could take that thing and uh, get, a, get rid of it for him at the consignment booth, but that's just what's not happening. So, Randy's got a really awesome kit for sale if anybody's looking for something like that. Oh boy, this is going to make moving around pretty difficult here. Okay. Whatever. I guess that's just the price you pay. Yeah, nothing's easy, is it? Yeah, again, I'm very glad I'm doing this now because this would have been a fucking chore at this guy's house. I don't know that I'm going to get this perfect. I, my main, my real main goal here is I just want to get, I want to get this set up well enough that I can first and foremost get some photos of it for this guy, send him some pictures of his kit. That'll keep the kit in the for the, oh, the rack. Should. Should keep. Maybe I can move this foot. That's a, what a genius idea that is, Mr. Sam. Take this foot. Slide it back a little bit. Oh my god, that's happening. Oh, okay. There we go. Good shit. Yeah, I guess that's prob that probably makes more sense to have to put that way. Cause there's not going to be not going to be any weight coming this way. It's all going to be going that way. Okay, okay, I like it. Let's do the same thing with this. What do you say? Oh, my other thought is I was hoping that I could take only my truck to take this kit down to Nashville because I really daily or not or Knoxville. I really, really don't want to take my giant goddamn trailer on a 16-hour round trip to Knoxville. Because, you know, trailers suck. They're heavy. They take a... They're hard to, hard to drive around. But look, it's starting to feel like I'm going to probably have to do that. Yeah, do. Oh, do, 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 do. That looks fucking amazing. I'd have a total boner if I was saying that. Oh, for everybody, anybody watching. What is this? Text message? Okay. Day jobs. Texting me here a little bit. No thank you. Not interested. Yeah, Randy. Thanks, man. This does look pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. It's a giant kit, and I'm excited. It's fun. So for anybody watching, uh, Randy's kit, that George Way that he's selling, is a 22 by 14, 12 by 8, 16 by 16. Billion dollar baby blue lacquer. It's fucking mint. He also has a really awesome uh, done it titanium for sale. Done it titanium snare drum. So contact Randy Cervello if you're interested in any of those things. Sean says, I've always wanted a metal kit since I saw Danny Carey playing on Jeff Ogletree Peisty. My God, yes. That um, that Danny Carey kit was fucking mind boggling. Um, yeah, and I, I work with a partner that helps us make our cast shells. We can actually do, we can do cast bronze shells in fucking any size. Now, 
they're incredibly expensive. Is there any lacquer on the brass? Sean, these, they're not brass, they're steel. They're, uh, they're 14 gauge carbon steel and then they're, uh, powder coated that color. So they're powder coated like a gold color. Um, but yeah, man, Je- Sean, I'm super into the, the metal drums. I, I'm having a lot of fun making them. And, uh, I hope to do more, genuinely, because they're just, they're a lot of fun. They sound fantastic. Okay, here we go. Church going on. Let's loosen that screw. Make sure this is tight. Okay. That Danny Carey kit, man. Holy shit, was that nice. But I, I, I'm excited. I've been doing a lot of steel kits. What I'd really like to do, I'd like to do some more aluminum kits. Because I think aluminum holds a lot of possibilities. Mainly because it's so, uh, so light. Aluminum's real light. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. Uh, da, da. I've got to get a hi hat stand in here somewhere. Bass drums. Fuck. This is a little bit of a puzzle. Isn't it? Just a little bit of a puzzle. Maybe I should be setting this up a different way. Maybe I should be setting up this whole thing facing this direction. So that I have room to walk here. Set the kit up that way. Yeah, fuck it. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. I still have a 14 inch rag top kit. I guess, like. God damn, does that sound good? Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. I've heard that the bass drum for that Danny, yeah, I, I would 100% agree that the the Danny Carey kit's probably 80 pounds. Okay, I gotta put these sticks down, or I'm just gonna keep doing that all fucking day. Whew, okay. I hate to do this to you guys, but I gotta take this apart. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to turn the bass drum 90 degrees, face it toward this wall, set the rack up in this orientation, just so that I have room to do this. This is like, I was, when we started this stream, I was talking to Kevin about like, priorities, right? And the reason my number one priority is to get the fuck out of this shot is specifically what you're looking at here. Drums are real big. They take up a lot of space, and we do not have enough space. I'm just, I'm right now, I'm trying not to think about the 3,000 square foot building that I want that I could be setting this fucking kid up in. Because for anybody that doesn't know, we had a bit of a fire down there in December, and we're going to have, we're just, we kind of have the thing on pause for the moment. We're going to be probably... Late March, April, somewhere in there. Yeah, probably late April. Let's be realistic here. Probably late April. I'll be going down there. I'll be soliciting volunteers if anybody has some some uh, free time to go down and pressure wash. Because that's basically to recover from that fire. What I need to do is I just need to go down there, pressure wash the uh, pressure wash the interior of the building. And then there's just going to be a little bit of like, uh, I guess you would say, electrical work that needs done. Going to have to redo some lighting that I had already previously done, which is not too big of a deal. Let's turn that like that. Let's get rid of these stupid fucking things. Wonderful. 
Wonderful. 14-inch rack tom on the on his left. Uh the the 14-inch rack tom will be like it's it, it's not a lefty kit. It's a regular kit. Um, you know, like that's set up like for a right-handed player, and it'll be 10, 12, 13, 14 rack toms, 16, 18 floor toms, 16, 18 on the right. You know, descending toms from left to right, 10 through 14, and then 6, 8, 10 uh, uh, concert toms somewhere. Jonathan, I appreciate that, man. That's nice of you. That's super nice of you. Did I miss any comments? I can't. Can I scroll? Oh, what the hell's going on? I can't scroll. Oh, okay. Anyways, I know a good electrician too, but he is also busy making drums. Yeah, I I do like doing electrical work. Um, and I had done all the electrical work in that building. There wasn't much though. Like the extent of the electrical work was, I ran a bunch of like EMT conduit on the ceiling, and I put in all the the lighting was done. And then I I ran like a circuit over to the the heater, and I got the heater running. So I'm just I'm hoping that all the the conduit is okay, because if the conduit's okay then I can uh, reuse all of that conduit, which will be great. Oh, this is going to be a little scary. How can I do this? No. Do it smart. That's how you do it. Don't rush it. Don't rush, sir. You take your time. Should have started like this in the beginning. Okay. Better? Better. Much better. Perhaps I should get a snare drum stand and set up a usable kick hat snare and then get the toms in around that. Okay, let's do that. That's like, I, I always remember when I was, when I used to play a big kit, that was like, that's the key, right? The thing that really matters, the heart of the kit is your relationship to the bass drum pedal, the hi hat pedal, and the snare drum. Because that's the heart of the drum set. Everything else that's involved is ancillary. So perhaps that's that's how I should start my room. Okay. You guys still see this? Let me change. Back you up a little bit. There we go. Let's go this way. Jonathan asks, how much does that bass drum weigh? Good question, Jonathan. I, I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but upwards of 40 pounds. It's, uh, it's a heavy bitch. It is a heavy bitch. Okay. So let's get find that sand in this bitch in a place that makes sense. <laughs> I really know that I need to actually set up pebbles. There we go. I had it's gonna be a bit of a reach over there. I mean I guess I could move a little farther in this way. This. Gotta change this a little bit here. Should be my best method. Let me turn you guys here so you can see what the fuck I'm doing. Maybe we can have two views of this. The weight stops the thunder from kicking back into you. <laughs> Bring it down. Oh, cords. Bring it down. Bring it down. Negative. That's is that better? Is that worse? I can't see. Nah, let's go. Let's go. I wish I could tip this, but I don't think I can tip this. Which is super annoying. Can I like kind of fake this tip a little bit? We're balancing it on the wall? Kind of? Perhaps, maybe. Perhaps, maybe. 
Mm. Well, I think the time may have come. I finally need to get a, a better fucking tripod. I have like a $5 tripod for the cell phone, which has served me well. But I may need to get a better one. Oh, Jesus. This is the best snare drum stand I've ever used in my entire life. I love this snare drum stand more than anything. I don't have any allegiance to any brand of hardware whatsoever. I've used everything in the past, I'm sure, as a lot of you have. But this thing's, this thing's pretty kick-ass. I am a fucking fan of this thing. God, will you stop it? Let's bring it down a little bit. Jonathan, okay. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by, dude. Jonathan's out, everybody. He's got to go. Lunch break's over. Boss man says he's back to work. I wanted to change it. I really. Oh, this rotates a full three seconds. Ah, there you go, you dumb fuck. That'll work. I'm figuring it out, boys. Slowly but surely. Need to have this thing a little bit closer. That's why I ordered these. There's like two varieties of these Gibraltar rack clamps, or these Gibraltar like ball and socket things. One of them's real short, has like a real short tube on it, and then the other one has a much longer tube on it. I thought it would probably make a lot of sense to get the longer tube just for situations like this where I need a little bit more reach. That's that's where that's gonna be. Get back in just a little bit. I like this angle. In a little bit. All the way over here. All the way to the end. This is out. I don't know, man. I ever play with four rounds. No, I've never, I don't know, have any of you guys ever played a kit with four rack toms? Because I never have. I always, like, the, I maxed out at three. I, I remember that I had a 10, 12, 13 Ludwig kit that I really liked. But I've never had four rack toms. So, ergonomically, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to do this. Best thing I can figure is, get them, you know, get them at a decent angle. I'm a big fan of conservation of motion while you're playing drums. I don't think you should reach. I don't think you should have to reach really far for anything. But re realistically, that's going to be pretty hard to achieve. This kind of kit. Like it's not. No matter what you do, you, you end up with this many pieces on a kit. It's going to be a little bit hard. And not to mention, it, it's extra difficult because none of these drums are small. They're all like huge drums. Like the all of the rack toms. Are. Yeah, we're just that hi hats is gonna have to live over there somewhere. That is. What that is. Right. Yeah, the right like <laughs> all the drums are huge. The the rack toms are all instead of being like eight, ten, twelve, thirteen or something, they're ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That might be a little too close. Yeah, that's about where I like to have my that's that. Off. Yeah, all the drums, like, they, and then the, the depths on the rack toms, instead of being like 8 by 7, 10 by 8, 12 by, you know, 9, or even 10 by 6, 10 by 7, 12 by 8, the, uh, the rack toms are all real deep. They're all 10 inches deep. Every single one is 10 inches deep. Which I'm excited about because I, like, totally. That's not something you get a lot. Like it, it's, you know, whenever you buy a kit from anybody anywhere, it's, there's varying depths to the rack toms. But I can go back even further. I would like this to live. Also, I can move the rack. Yeah, I think we should. There.
Sorry, guys, I'm lost in thought here. You can check these comments. You guys got any thoughts? What should I do? Simon Phillips, but his hi hat really short. I don't think it's all going to fit up. But yeah. Uh, what did Sean, Sean, what did you have to do about depth versus width? How does that affect choosing two dimension head choice? Well, there's, there's, before I answer you, Sean, let me just be lost in thought. Randy, I'm starting to agree with you. I don't think everything's going to fit on this front. Not these four rackets. I mean, like them. I have, I'm going to have two wings here. Maybe I should just, what do you say we set up the wings? Let's give ourselves some options. Um, while I'm doing this, I can certainly answer your question, Sean. Uh, there's, in my mind, there's like a hierarchy of things that goes into the way a drum sounds, right? And, First and foremost, I, I usually leave size out of that because I, I feel like that's so obvious it doesn't need to be included. I'm not like shitting on your comment. I'm just like, but once people ask me like, oh, what's this going to sound like? How does that sound? What does this, how does that change the sound? My, my usual theory is uh, first and foremost, tuning, right? The way you tune that drum head is going to be the thing that, or both heads on the drum, is going to be the thing that changes the sound the very most. And oh, let's turn you Let's turn you guys. Okay. About that. Can we come up a little bit? We're still kind of low. There we go. Three sided rack. Yeah, it's, it, Randy, it's going to be a three sided rack. Um, so I might as well bite the bullet right now and get all three sides set up, right? So let's do that shit. Uh, but yeah, um, Sean, to your point, or to your question, my, my thought is always, <clears throat> first and foremost, it's going to be tuning. Second, it's going to be head choice. And then, like, somewhere in there, this is this is one that I don't know that a lot of people would include or not, but just the player, like, the way you're playing and hitting the drum is going to make a huge difference in the way it sounds. And, like, a lot of people don't understand that. They're like, oh, I can't get the sound out of the drum. And it's you have to sometimes examine the way you're playing the drum and kind of ask yourself, are you... Are you playing into the drum? Like, are you, you know, are you play, like, my, my thought is you should always play out of the drum, you know, like, hit the head and then let it ring, you know what I mean? Get, get out of the way of that drum singing, which can be hard to do. But as far as size, I mean, size, and then, like, I always put shell material near the bottom of what I think changes the way a drum sounds. And that's not to say that it doesn't, because it certainly does. You know, like, a metal drum set, it's going to sound drastically different than a wood drum set. Same thing for a snare drum. But, also, um, the, the size of the drum is massively important, you know? I think that that, I think that that holds more weight than, I think the size of the drum will hold more weight than, or like, affect the sound more, I should say, than what uh, what, what the drum's made out of. Okay, loving this. Let's get that in there somewhat square if we can. And it's, it's, it's a really difficult thing to have a simple, like, allegory for how drum size affects sound. Because it, it's complicated, right? Like, that's a complicated thing. There's so much, so many things that can change the sound of a drum. All right, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Now it's looking like a proper drum cage. Now we're fucking getting somewhere. I think, okay, I need this to be higher. I need that to be a whole lot higher. Okay, 14 will go on the right wing using one of the longer holders to get it up high enough to bridge the down slope from the 13 inch to the first floor tom. Okay, I like that. That's a good idea. I'm also thinking, I'm thinking I need to use the shorter, <clears throat> I have these also. These are like the shorter Gibraltar rack clamps. I think I'm going to use one of these. On one of these rack toms. Because what I'm thinking is I'm gonna need 
like the like the Neil Pert situation, right? Where like the he has like those high toms like up to the left, like kind of above his hi hat. I think that's what I'm gonna need to do here with the because there's I have not even brought out the six, eight, and ten concert toms yet. So I think the six, eight, ten concert toms are gonna have to go kind of like above the hi hat. And I would like to put them on the lower rack because I would like to reserve the... There's like a second tier to this. Like there's going to be an entire second level to this rack. And I would like to reserve that strictly for cymbals if possible. I'd like to get all the drums on the lower rack. So I'm thinking the 6, 8, 10, I'd like to put those on the, the left side, the hi-hat side. Fuck, that's going to have to be real goddamn high though. Yeah, I agree. That is. That is the only way, Randy. That is the only option. So let's let's change this one. For Yeah, ooh baby, complicated big puzzle with no no directions. That's what this feels like. Like you don't you don't know what the puzzle's gonna look like when it's done. First off, but they don't remove. They gotta slide. Yeah, that's what this feels like. It feels like a big puzzle, but there's no directions for said puzzle. You're just on your own. <laughs> Which is fine, that's fine and good, I'm not, that's okay. I'm not bring this up. Use this and remove this. No, oh, well, we should probably keep the button. We'll put it back on there. Iron back that one. Okay. Like it. Like it. Like it. Like it. A lot. Okay. Fun, fun questionnaire from the day. Does anybody know where the term trap set comes from? I know Randy. Randy says, I think you will need the 6 8 on the left wing, the 10 12 13 on the front, and 14 on the right. I, that's a good idea. Perhaps I should get the uh, 16 and 18 snuggled in here somewhere. Let's turn this around. Let me see. It's probably not real helpful. Uh, let's just put the four toms where the four toms are going to live. Damn, that's good. Somewhere in that region, the portal can't adjust, but that'll fuck it out. Let's get rid of this. Bring it in a little bit forward a little bit. Okay, love it. Beautiful. Turn this foot. Let's turn this foot in a little bit. But I have stand there. Okay, like it. What do you guys think? How are we looking, sir? That works. That looks good. Okay. Oh, this is hard. Oh, jeez. So, Randy is saying 10, 12, 13. Oh, that's hard. Oh, 
I almost need to, I just almost needed to be like this, but then the problem is the fucking my hand stand. So the pen's gotta start here. I'm gonna start here. Alright, it's also difficult because I'm doing this on a live stream and I have no fucking clue. So, like, I'm worried about, like, being somewhat entertaining, but also, like, I just need to squeeze in. So, snare, 10, 12, 13. But then, like, 14 almost ends up, the depth might be hard to see here, but then the 14 almost ends up, like, over here. I think that's just what it's going to have to be. I think I could sweep this whole thing. Yes. Sweep the whole thing this way. Sweep the whole thing. Okay, like that, digging that, that's better, that'll give me more better positioning on this 14, I can bring this wing in a little bit. And then, remove this and then the 10 goes Okay, liking it. I have that bitch in there somewhere. Lovely, dig it. You know, honestly, this is, there's a lot of having a drum business that is not very fun. There's a lot of just like, oh, I'm going to spend eight hours today sanding these fucking things. And that's, that sucks. I don't like that. Nobody likes that. But there's occasional moments like this that are super fun. Because I remember being a broke drummer that did not have enough money to buy. Okay, we're getting there. Randy, we're getting there. I think we're getting there. I remember being a broke drummer that was like, when I was getting my pro rack all put together, and I was like, so excited to like, just to buy like a rack clamp or a pipe or some stupid shit. But after a dream. Yeah, okay. Like it. Like I was saying, I feel bad, guys. I'm, I might just be sitting here being quiet because I'm just like deep in thought. Deep, deep in thought, trying to figure out where this shit needs to live. I know this can't be here. We're going to need that. That's going to have to be a short one. Just peeping. That kit is entertaining. Agreed. Sean, thank you. I agree. All right, so let's, let's get one of these out here. Let's get one more of these. What do you say? Hmm. That is hard to open. Muscle up and make out. I used to work with this guy at Penelec, my day job. Whenever I'd be struggling with something like a little bitch, he'd be like, Muscle up and make out. And I was like, What? He's like, And then he would just like use his fucking man strength to do the thing that I was struggling to do with my little boy strength. And then I was like, oh, I'll still have to make out. And I actually, I still see, I know Dave Kesselak is not watching this, but Dave, I think about you daily. I've used that in so many instances in my life. And that's oftentimes the case. It just needs like 10% more. You just need like 10% more man strength to just finish doing the thing you're doing. Like in that, let's also change this one. While we're at it. Okay. 
I hope Kevin comes back and watches this stream and is like, Dear God, I'm not going to have any room to do anything in there. <laughs> that's that's kind of one of the that's the main reason I'm actually I want to get this kit out of here. It's just like we've had a huge run on drum sets recently, and we're like you know I do a lot of like me and Kevin we do build a lot of snare drums, right? And we do drum sets, but it's we're not known for doing drum sets, so people don't order a lot of drum sets, which is something I'd like to change because I like doing cool drum sets. It's much more fun. But we had a big run couple months ago on drum sets and now all the drum sets are done uh, we just shipped one recently to our friend Kyle and we've got a couple other ones happening like there's this Babinga kit in here that you might be able to see on the in some of the peripheral shots but like I was really trying to avoid this situation that accidentally ended up happening whereby all the drum sets would be done at the same time because we're so limited on space it's just like it's gonna make it real hard, but it happened anyways. So now I'm kind of like, all right, the drum sets are done. For the love of God, get them out of this shop so that we can move about, you know, move about the inside of our workspaces. We're almost there. This one's this one's almost ready to rock. All right, now we're doing better. A little rotation on that. Like it. Love it. Dig it. Take me back a little bit. Dig it. Okay. Here it goes. Now. Uh, 14 is going to have to go over there. No questions asked. I hate to do this, but I guess I should probably put a snare drum on here. Just, just for the fuck of this. It's no matter what. Just the snare drum so that I can understand where things are going to be. Use a snare drum that is the size of the kit. So hey, anybody watching? <laughs> I have this uh, this drum and two other handmade brass snare drums that we will sale very soon. Uh, I, we built them for the Delaware Drum Show, and they came home with us, so we'll be selling them at a pretty decent price very shortly. If anybody needs a brass snare drum, they're like, we got some. This one's a 14 by 7. I also have a 14 by 6 and then a 14 by 5. And they all sound fucking The cool thing about these snare drums is I also, I made the hoops. So I made the shell, right? <clears throat> made out of solid 2 millimeter brass. And then I made the hoops also. Lower that. Sarah. Yeah. This is the way. This is the way. Get goddamn kit figured out. Get the get the three piece kit. Like I said earlier, you know what the you know what the term trap kit means? I'm sure Randy does. Probably no one else. It means contraption. It's shorthand for the word contraption. That's very much what a drum set is. It's a big contraption. Many different things. Work.
Okay, I think we got something now. Sorry, it looks like a drum set. Let's get the 10 on there. Randy was saying 10 and 12 straddling. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. I texted you a picture of the 10 and 12 straddling. Oh, perfect. Let's check that out real quick. I don't know if this camera is going to go black. I'm checking Randy's text. Mmm, okay. Yeah. I might, you know what? I might just need to Google real quick something. I might need to just, nah, let's not. Let's not Google things. What do you say? Flip this for a second. I, do. I may have to jump off here sometimes. Well, where's the full screen? There's a full screen. Okay. Randy, Randy has the 10 and the 12 straddlings. That's three rack toms. Yeah, that, that 14, it's just going to have to be over in fucking left field. That's just what that, that just is. What that is. There's no change in that. So let's. Uh, da, da, da. So 14 is ostensibly going to be here. Might end up with a rack. I have over here to hold it. That makes more sense. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this if we can. I really... Wait, how many of these do I have? Did you miss one of these somewhere? There's three of those. What do I have? I have four of these. I'm thinking I might need to <clears throat> keep losing my drum key. Shit. <clears throat> I might need to move this up a little bit. This left side rack. Or this space drum for the, uh, you know. The four tom side. Let's move the four tom side up a touch. Or as far as it'll go, I should say. Hey? Lovely? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be like that. <clears throat> Just gonna take that off. Loosen this. Loosen that. And close up. Wonderful. Okay. I'd like to bring this in a little bit. There. Just okay, okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting something that looks like a drum set put together. That should be a place where. Fuck it. Put the bass drum pedal on it. I wanted to not do this because 
I was trying to do this as quick and dirty as possible, but I'm starting to quickly realize there is no quick and dirty for something like this. Base drum pedal limits. Oh my god, these fucking, this pedal gets clean so badly. Okay. Doing good. Looking good. Loving it. Let's do it without breaking. I don't know if you guys have messed with these Dixon bass drum mounts, but I am a huge fan. Evans makes them, and I think, I forget the, I, I think the dude that came up with the idea, I think his name is Dixon. So they kind of like named it after him as well. And they're great. I am, I really like them. They're just like, I use them for practical purposes, or kind of, you know, drum business type purposes, because I'm constantly, Nick J, what's up, man? How you doing? Oh, I try to remember to put a blanket on the bass drum while I'm setting up the toms. Nick, that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. I'm an idiot though, Nick, so I'm just gonna not do that. <laughs> Sorry guys, the, the audio is probably hella weird for the drum set thing, but I wanted to give it a go just real quick there. Oh god, I don't want to do this, but I need to put this fucking sans symbols on here. Have there of those in here? Just starting to realize I haven't really eaten very much today. <laughs> I'm skipping the fuck out for the moment. That's ridiculous. That's the stupid shit I've ever seen. Let's change that. Move that further away. Before we do that, let's do the outside. I might flip it facing up. Like this? No, like this? No. Is that Yep. Maybe like that. There's a possibility that that would work. Possibility exists that this would work. That might work. Well, I really should have put my glasses on. Sometimes I wake up and I just like immediately I wake up and I'm like, I don't need long range long range vision this morning until later because I'm doing close up drum stuff for a while. So I'll just wake up and not put on any glasses, which is. A bit of a mistake because I can't see the screen to read the comments. Okay. I'll tighten up a little bit. Okay. It's real high. Pretty close. Like presence. Scoot you over a little bit, buddy.
God damn, this thing's gonna be a Ferrari of a drum set. Look at this shit. That ain't gonna work. Cheat. Okay. So I need that to be. You can either move the whole rack this way a little bit, which might make sense, or not. Let's do that. Can I do it? <laughs> yep. They're good. There's a lot of fucking variables here. We're getting closer, though. Okay. Bucks. Like that. It's not gonna slow me. Okay. Team's gonna be over there. Yeah, I think getting the getting the ten to twelve centered on the kick, I think, is gonna be I think that's gonna be pretty clutch. So if I can just kinda get that to happen. Because that's like in my mind I'm thinking to myself like just big picture here, where does this now need to be? I try to remember to put Woo, we're having a deep Long stream here today, fellas. For like an hour and a half. So funny. I was just like, oh, I'll just jump on here real quick. These live streams always really illustrate to me like how much time it takes me to do a thing. Because there's a counter, there's a timer running, telling you how long you've been doing the thing. Off. Oh god, that's it. Super toy. Okay. Shit. 
So there's not much I can do to change the position of the high hats. That's got to stay. All right, let's go to the 14 over there and see what the fuck happens. What do you say? I hate how high you're having to lift your arms to get. Oh, dude, me too. There's no choice here. Like, it's a 24 inch bass drum with 10 inch deep toms. So you're like ostensibly 37 inches to the top of the rack toms. Like, Sometimes you just gotta build what the client asks. I would have like personally, I'm short as fuck, right? So like, I I really like a 20 inch bass drum, and I also very much like shallow rack toms, specifically for that reason. Oh, Randy, for anybody watching, what does it does it sound like? Like, does the audio kind of clip when I play this kit, or is it okay? Because I remember I was doing some, like, drum demo stuff on here on Restream a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's going to be outside. I was doing some drum demo stuff here on Restream a couple of weeks ago, and or, like, probably two months ago now. And whenever I would, like, transition from speaking words to playing drums, it would all of a sudden, like, the audio just couldn't handle it, because the, the, you know, the audio, the, the volume level of playing drums versus speaking is so crazy that I had to put on some kind of, like, I think it was, like, auto, I had to turn auto gain off. Now, you know, in all fairness, I'm not, I'm not super concerned right now about the audio. Speech is okay. Here, okay, so Nick, let me, let me know. Here's me talking, right? Does it go to like a garbled bunch of dog shit when I start playing drums? Yeah, okay, the warble, Sean, that's what I was kind of asking about. I, uh, I, I'll, at some point I'll do a proper, or if I have, hopefully if I have time, I'll do a live stream here. And we can, uh, we can kind of, hopefully I can get the audio set up just for playing so that it's not warbling like that. Because I, the reason I'm asking is because I, I'm sure it's not coming across in the video, but this kit sounds amazing. Like it's, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here. It really just sounds so motherfucking good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's not going to go there. I need to go farther away. How can I go about getting that farther away? Rotate that out a little bit. This. Loosen this clamp. Drop this down. Maybe possibly. Okay, like it, love it, gotta have it. Doing pretty good. Oh, jeez. Okay. okay, I'm liking this. This is. This seems feasible.
directional. I don't love this distance is weird. Like I'm, I feel like if I'm coming into this floor, um, this is too. This needs like. Let's do that. Yep, it's all warbly. Nah. Yeah, I, I figured it was garbled dog shit. I'm sorry. It's it sounds real good in person. Maybe I don't know if I'll have time today, but all I have to do is just go in and change a couple of settings in the. Uh, oh God! Hold on. Jesus Christ. Okay. All I got to do is go in and change a couple of settings, and it'll immediately be much better. However, I have a goal here today. That goal, now, let me just like right here. Can I just move the back out? No, that's not weird. What's wrong with that? Why can't you do that? You can do that. Let's do that. Yeah, let's just actually keep this. Yeah, if I change a couple of settings in the audio for the, the streaming app that I'm using, then the drums actually sound pretty decent. I mean, they don't, you know, like I'm not going to be running microphones on them. Oh, yeah, there we go. This is it. We're getting it, boys. We're getting it now. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is this is where I want this. Okay. Okay. Stay there. Okay. Now we got something. Is that better? That's better. This up yet a little more. Lovely. Then if we could just rack this forward a little bit, let's see if we can do that without wrecking everything. Oh, come on. Okay. Love that. Okay, now we got some shit happening. Yeah, I need like a needed a strike lane here. That's still a little too it's still like to I don't like to get my shoulder involved while playing but there's gonna be a second layer to this rack I'm gonna have symbols up here so it just it is huh. that's looking pretty awesome I am liking that for the most part I think this is about as functional as I can get this to be. Randy, if you're still here, do you remember uh, last night the those Zildjian? <laughs> you could jam on some early '90s Metallica and tilt the toms. Off. I thought about that, but I I I don't know. I like to, I really do like to be able to play down into the drum, you know. Um, Randy, if you're still here, this hi hat, the Zildjian uh, quick beat hi hats that I had at the show last night. Do you know where the fuck those are? You'll get some mitigation if you raise the snare four times in the throne. 
Yeah. Are you talk are you when you say mitigation, Randy, what are you talking about? Like for the audio quality in here? I don't really I mean I'm not too worried about the audio quality but like I just get like I can get decent audio audio quality if I change the, the stream settings to be kind of optimized for playing in the merch box. Merch box. Yeah, there's some symbols. Perfect. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate that. I'm going to take this 10 inch tong off. I'm going to get the hi hat on. Because, like, the one thing that you can't compromise, right, is you can't compromise. The, the core of the kit. You can't compromise kick snare hat. That's got to be somewhere reachable because that's where you're going to be living most of the time. All the ancillary extra voices on the kit, they're nice, but they have to work around that heartbeat. So I'm going to get this heartbeat of the kit set up here in a way that's very functional, and then I'm going to make everything work around the heartbeat. I think that's the only thing that makes sense. get the 10 in here. Almost. You almost get the 10 in here, but I can't quite you can sacrifice by kind of moving the hi hat over the side here a little bit. I mean, I guess that's kind of one of the things you got to do, right? If you're going to have a giant drum set, you're going to have to maybe move your kicks in your hat a little bit. I would have met, I'm a short guy, like I said. Hopefully, this guy's a little bit taller than me, so he would make more sense for it to be a little bit more spread out. Okay, I think that'll work. Let's try to get that 10 right there. Let's move the snare just a little bit. Let's move the hats just a little bit. Hmm. Over where we're going to put the 6, 8, and 10 rack concert songs. So can we get that in there as it is now? Thank you. Uh, yeah, Sean, it does feel pretty epic. Epic. I mean, I feel like the throne raised up. I mean, I don't like my throne raised up, but I also wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Cut your shoulders a break by raising the throne a little. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, Brandy, I'm not like I'm not too fucking worried about it, really. Like this is all I need. To, I'm not. If I was setting this up for me, believe me, I'd be too maybe making a lot of changes. But I'm just setting this up for this other guy. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Let's let's do that shit. That'll work. Maybe we can. Yeah, I that. I tried to get, I tried to buy like clamps and stuff that were all very very adjustable. That that was always my one complaint with like this pearl rack system. It's like everything seemed to be. Like, I, there was a lot of places where there was, like, rotational and angle adjustment, or where there wasn't rotational and angle adjustment, where I wish that there had been. So I, I, I like, got these, like, rotating clamps, and I prefer to have a little bit more angle adjustment. This is too
Yeah, that might be. Alright, we'll see. Maybe that's going to be close. Okay, let's give it this way a little bit. I rotate it in. Yeah, that's the point. One of the other things I love about these, you know, these circular tom mounts like this, or the, I guess you would say the, the L rod style tom mounts is they like they like, you can rotate on the tom you can rotate on that L rod to kind of like help position, which is very handy. Okay, so that's um. Yeah, it's a little awkward. It's, uh, it's a little bit of that. It needs to move back. Let me stand this up a bunch or two. So, uh, that makes Okay, okay, I'm liking this. It's a little bit in the snare. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, we're doing something now. Let's take this back off for a second. Let's rotate this down this line a little bit more. Stay back up. Tight. If there's a, if any of you have been watching this for the whole time, I can't thank you enough because this has to be some of the most boring fucking content that anyone has ever created. It's a dude in his garage moving drums around like a dipshit. It's just... Okay. Now we got it. Now we got it. One thing I don't like about these suspension mount things and this specific type of setup is the amount of flex that's in them, because there is a lot of flex. So you have to almost like pre You almost have to like preload. Oh, there's what. There's... You almost have to preload the the clamp to prepare for the flex. Much, much more rigid. Ah, oh, got it. Yeah, like you put the you put the tom on there, and then you take take the weight off the tom, and then the whole thing flexes with the weight. You have to kind of like plan for that. You have to angle it up a little bit higher than you want it to be to begin with. There, get in there. Get in there. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, this is this is nice. It's 
a little bit kick and hat or a little bit wider than I would like. Not bad. Loosen this and slide this over a little bit. Like that, dig that. Okay, like that, dig that. Loosen this. I'm trying to get this 10 inch tom really dialed in here. And it's a bit of a challenge. But that looks, there we go. That looks good. I really, the one thing I really like, I mean, if you're, like, if you're racking, if you're rocking a lot of these racks, I really like to take like levels. Like, I like snare drums and floor toms at nearly the same level. Rack toms at least at the same level. I have an inch here. I guess I can move this over, move that over. It would actually, it would be better to probably move the 13 over a little bit, then move the 14. Let's do that. Okay, like that, dig that. Let's move this 14 a little bit. No, no, don't loosen that. Loosen this. I'm getting pretty close, I think, to having this mostly the way I want it. Ah, okay. Toit, 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 toit. A lot of things to tighten here. A lot of little thumb screws. Make sure you're not. Okay. Like all of that. That's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, stretch goal for the day. Let's see if we can get the 6, 8, and 10 on there somewhere. It looks fucking cool as fuck. Thank you, Randy. I agree, man. Sean says, uh, if you ever use tube lugs, you can slide the unattached tube through this, the unattached tube through the suspension mount. The screw on the tube lugs and the mount holds to the lugs, not the tension rods. Hmm. I, I'm kind of, I gotta ponder that. I, th I think I know what you're saying, Sean. Are you saying that the you could put the um, you could put the um, uh, what do you call it? Okay, I need some. Hold on, Sean. Let me answer that question a second. Where in the fuck should the six, eight, and ten be here? My instinct says put that to do something like that. You know, like here, ish. Okay, okay, okay. Just a little bit, but she's not. Yeah, I think that's going to be the plan. Now, I was really going to do that, I would cut my sand off. Cut my. I can just take it out. I don't really need the hi hat. I don't want to cut my hat at all. I don't know why. I probably could. But I'm not going to. I haven't yet. 
I don't really need the entire hi hat stand, right? I just need a stand in for the idea of where the hi hat stand lives. So let's start with let's start with the ten inch rack. What say you boys? Like that. Ten here. Okay. <laughs> I understand now why like I, I I guess from playing a lot and you know, just gigging a lot, I got very like jaded against the idea of like big ass kits like this. But I'm starting to understand the appeal. Like I, I mean, like I said, I used to play a like a you know three rack tons, two four tons type setup. This is fun. This is a fun fucking setup. Like no questions asked. I totally understand why people get into this. So if I didn't have to move a drum set, this is probably the type of drum set I would be setting up. All right, so ten right there. Okay, let's try that. All right, all right, all right. Put some of these on here. Oh man. Yeah, unfortunately, like I said, I was kind of disappointed with the uh, the way they, they changed these legs, you used to be able to just like, there used to be a clamp on the top of the leg that you could just pop the previous leg into. But they've changed that design a little bit to make it more modular, which I, I totally get. I guess, I'm not really disappointed in it. I just wish I could look that up before I ordered this stuff. Most of the, I mean, it just, all it means is I just have to order, uh, um, Wait, do I need anything for that? No, I don't. I have I have enough in here to do that. Okay, cool. We're good. Never mind. Thought I had to order some extra of these PCX. I think they're like two hundred clips, whatever. I don't think I do. I think I got enough. Alrighty. You're getting there. This is really, I, you know, it's. I've never been asked to do this before. And I guess this is like, this is what drum techs do all the time for a living. Am I right? Like, they're just setting up drum sets for other people to play. But usually there's some kind of, I've never been asked to be like, hey, set up a drum set for me in a way that I think I'll like. You know, that's it's that seems strange to me. I've never done that before. This is, um, hey, there's a first for everything. All right. This is bad. I might just want to start with one drum here. Let's just get one drum on here and see how that's going to look. That's fucking good. <laughs> Okay, I need this to be way further away. Shucks. Oh, this is a hard one. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. Is 
this might work. Sorry, I'm doing a real bad job streaming right now. I'm like not saying words. Move that rack out a little bit. I would like to be almost like this flat angle. Okay, achieve that. Right, let's take this off. Take this off, then we'll take the 10 inch tom off. And then I think I'm going to pull the rack, this wing, outwards a little bit. Let's see if that will give me enough. I'd also like some more height. Don't fall off there, homie. Stick around. Bring that out a little bit. We'll scooch this back in a little bit. Perfect. That actually makes a little bit of sense. I like that one. Get the ten inch, let's get the 10-inch rack tom back in here. Okay, here we go. Right. I can use a little rotation forward, I think. Bit. That. I'll save the fall. We're just love it. Now let's try this ten. Yeah. <laughs> Here a little bit. Up. Okay, get something. I'd like a lot more angled down. Take this back a little bit. This forward a little bit. There we go. That's the angle I'm looking for. That looks good. Sneak this all as forward as we can. So by the time we get down to the six inch tom, it's not like completely obfuscated. 
with that. Nope. All right. So I do it that way. Okay. So here, maybe I should like change this view so you guys can see what's going on up here a little bit better. Does that make a bit more sense? Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> All right, so we'll put this guy here. Yeah, so this kit is a 6, 8, 10 rack, uh, concert tom. 12, and then the, the rack toms uh, are 10, 12, 13, 14. Four toms are 16, 18. And bass drum is 24 by 18. Everything's real big. It's pretty fun. Big drums, they're fun. If you don't have to carry them places, big drums are fun. Fun, it was funny yesterday at the Delaware Drum Show, like, I kept, people kept doing the same thing. It was really funny. They were like, we had a steel drum set there. Just a simple three-piece kit, like 12, 13, 16 or something like that. Or, I'm sorry, 22, 13, 16. People kept, like, walking over to the floor tom and then lifting the floor tom. like, it was it's actually surprising to me how many people didn't realize that it was a steel kit. Like, I kept getting that a lot from people. They were like, I'd be like, that drum set is made out of steel. And they were like, what? And then their immediate reaction was to pick up the floor top to verify that, yes, this is indeed made out of steel. I thought that was pretty funny. It really, what it made me want to do though was like made me want to uh, make a drum set out of metal in a way. Because it was like, you know, it was a metal drum set, but it was also like Robert Talbot's metal drum set. And it kind of made me wish that the drum set was like very obviously made out of metal. Like some kind of, just, you know, shiny chrome. But even then, like, you wait a second, you know, like those little big chrome wraps, right? Steel power coated 
about that. Scripture is very important to say. Okay. Look at that shit. Scripture this over a little bit. Yeah, when I was a kid, my dad had a, uh, like a big, big, big Ludwig, Ludwig, uh, this is like kid. And, oh man, it was so much fun. All, like, I don't really, I didn't realize at the time, like, what an awesome kid it was. But, like, years and years later, I've thought about it a lot. It was like, I don't know what you call it. I'm sure there was like a model name for it. It was the, it was the one with like, Octoplus, I think. It was the one with like all of the fucking drums and like the huge rack toms, like 15 inch fucking rack toms. Ten out of ten, man. That's the coolest drum set I've ever built. <laughs> I should say we've ever built. Kevin, my partner in crime in this silly drum business, he's massively responsible for a lot of this kit also. So best drum set we've ever built. Kevin, thank you for everything to get this done. Appreciate it. Where the fuck is my hi hat rod? Oh, people, I gotta go. Alright, hey, thank you guys for swinging by. I gotta roll.